hardware specs. You want them, I got them. Let's find out what the Lumitone is made of. All right, folks, today we are doing a quick video checking out the hardware that makes up this wondrous machine. Now, the designers and engineers behind the Lumitone have decades of experience under their belt, and it certainly shows. Let's start by addressing the first thing your eyes gravitate towards, the 280 keys laid out in a hexagonal grid. So strikingly beautiful, even the honeybee would be envious of its perfection. So the grid itself has a nice gradual incline, which makes moving around feel really natural. It really helps you feel your way around as you play. Each individual key is a totally unique design. They make use of something called a Hall Effect Sensor, which was actually used on the Apollo 11 mission. Oh, well in the case of the Lumitone, it's absolutely true. So unlike regular key beds, the Lumitone can know the exact position of any key at any millisecond in time. This means that not only can each key act as a velocity sensitive note on or off key, but it can also be transformed into a continuous controller. You can even convert whole chords and drones into continuous controllers mid-performance using a feature called LumaTouch. We talked about this a bit in the last video, and we will go more in depth with it in the future. Huh, okay. Well, after a quick Google, it looks like NASA does, at least on occasion, make use of the Hall Effect Sensor. So, boom. So when it comes to Lumitone's polyphonic aftertouch feature, I gotta say, the pad at the bottom of the key travel that triggers the aftertouch is so satisfyingly sensitive and tactile. And this makes triggering the aftertouch parameters feel like a true extension of my fingers. It's as if the singularity has arrived and I've successfully merged with the machine world. The feel of the keys isn't unlike a high quality synth, but it does have its own thing going. They're non-weighted and have a nice full key travel. All 280 of these beauties have their very own LED that can be assigned any color you dream of. And they can vary from super bright to barely lit, all corresponding to the brightness of the colors you map to the keys. And they tell me in future software updates, there's gonna be a global brightness feature. So look forward to that. On the far left of the board is something most of you will recognize. We've got our mod wheel and our pitch bend. These both feel super substantial to the touch and were custom designed by Lumitone. I love the amount of resistance on the pitch wheel. Feels like I'm actually bending a note on a physical instrument. So heading north, we see the 10 preset buttons. These all come with the default presets as described in the manual, but can easily be swapped out for your own custom inventions, or anyone else's for that matter. You know, get yourself a Lumitone friend. Trade your inventions. It's as easy as holding down the button for a few seconds until the light blinks. And any mapping you've sent to your Lumitone will be saved. As simple as a car stereo's radio presets. So your grandma could do this too. And if we look underneath, we have this removable kickstand, which angles your Lumitone at an optimal 15 degrees, but it's easy to remove via these slick little screws if you wanna customize the position of your Lumitone or just lay it flat. Now all these precious parts need to be housed in a good home. So the engineers went all out on the casing. It's built using anodized aluminum. So not only is it highly durable, it's also corrosion resistant and eye-catchingly smooth. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at the rear panel. So going down the line, we've got the DC power connector and the power on off switch, a USB type B port, which you'll use for MIDI connection to a computer, a USB type A, and an RJ45 port, both of which the manual says are for the manufacturer's use only. We got the expression pedal jack here and the sustain pedal jack there. And of course, your MIDI in and out and through five pin DIN connectors here for when you wanna control analog synths or other hardware directly. And that's about all I can tell you about the hardware. In the next video, we'll be covering the software editor. So be sure to like and subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified every time a new video comes out. And thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next time.